Welcome back to our third installation of our marketing lessons from a data scientist snack break series. Uh, we're going to be talking today about where your data comes from. So third party sources versus first party sources. And then what that means uh, about what you can do with that data in terms of use cases. So first party data is going to be data that you are generating, uh, that you're collecting from uh, activity that, that users are, are triggering and that they're engaging. So that is often things like uh, website traffic, uh, mobile app data, uh, email engagement, customer service, point of sale transactions. You get the idea, but it's you collecting data that your customer uh, is telling you. And so they're, they're engaging and you're collecting that data. And so that's, you are the first party in that scenario. And you can pit that against uh, third party sources. So th that's data that you were not involved in the collection of, but often uh, acquire uh, after the fact. So what that looks like uh, kind of in the marketing ecosystem for the most part is uh, cookie pools, just very large cookie pools, people sharing data of users across um, uh, different places uh, on the internet. And so that's becoming an increasingly difficult um, source just in terms of hurdles like uh, GDPR and CCPA uh, privacy related uh, protocols that is making that uh, more difficult uh, to, to even get in the first place, let alone kind of uh, decreasing in quality. There's also things like public data scraping, uh, pulling people's preferences uh, from Twitter, uh, other kinds of public uh, social spaces. Um, there are also things like geolocation inference. I've seen offerings from companies who uh, will use geolocation to infer a lot of information, um, kind of at a demographic perspective. So if I know where you work and I know where you live, that tells me a little bit about um, uh, socioeconomically, kind of what you might look like um, and, and those kinds of things. But that again gets back to uh, privacy related issues um, that frankly, you know, that data in the first place. So um, we'll illustrate some of the things that you can do with first party data and third party data uh, with these two examples from Spotify. So these are two playlists that Spotify generated for me. One is uh, called The Ones That Got Away. It's a collection of songs that they think that I will have wished that I discovered earlier in the year. So this is based off of what I am actually listening to on Spotify um, and the songs that I'm actually engaging with and the artists uh, and that kind of thing. So they can infer then uh, what I might like from that. Um, compare that against third party sources. So this is going to be more aggregate data, kind of top level kinds of things. So you can imagine a top 50 uh, playlist for people in my country, you know, just from a kind of uh, demographic perspective. If you think about which playlist you would most likely um, engage with and the one that I would most likely engage with, I, I think it would hands down be this first party playlist that's based off of things that I'm likely going to like. So that they can only do that because they're listening to the signal that's present in that first party data that they're collecting um, for specifically that purpose. So this is an example of uh, more first party data. This is my profile inside of the Lytx customer data platform for our own marketing data. So you can see based off of this, uh, we've listened to the signal that's coming in from uh, web and from these other uh, touch points with which I've engaged uh, with Lytx as a platform. So you can see that I have an affinity for certain uh, topic areas uh, like customer data platforms, data, marketing, data science, uh, those kinds of things, and as well, uh, what my engagement looks like. So you can see that I'm likely to re-engage um, and you can personalize my experience based off of what you're seeing from me. So that's a, a bit of a taste of the things that you can kind of do with these first party and third party sources. And if we're listening correctly to our first party sources, then we can really get into uh, some really interesting uh, use cases and really build some interesting models then on top of that, which we will talk about in our subsequent sessions.